We are one for two in the rock at the laundromat, formerly known as King of Clean Laundromat. I am holding in my hand. It's 929, y'all. It's time for me to go take a nap. I usually go to bed at 8 o'clock when it's feasible. Law offices of Urim Nachivmoski. Working on that pronunciation. Urim Nachimovsky is a hip hop industry historian and legend and pioneer. I, hip hop's first lady historian, am stating this today. November 7, 2016. Very much a part of Sleeping Bag's record history. Which I have a connection to that with Just Dice. Never forget that jam back in 1987. It was probably Coogee Rap and Polos, one of their first shows. They were, they were tight on the stage. Uh, they were pretty good. They came around, they, they came up. So, in closing, I was speaking first at the Advanced Baptist Church on 142 in Rockaway. And I began informing of Shaka Mala, my brother Mark Perry King. Some of his going ons on Rockaway Boulevard prior to him being murdered in Virginia. And I got to the part in the story where he was in the cut at the house, at the home office, hiding out because allegedly he stole $500 from Doc because they weren't paying him. He was visibly using controlled substance. I'm using my law enforcement terms. I'm a former law enforcement officer. And... There were threats of a mile to a cocktail being thrown through the front window of my home, which never happened. My cousin, Little Beef, and some other relatives had to go up and speak to Doc, who was now deceased, who worked allegedly for Tony Montana, Tommy Mickens, who now does physical therapy. By the way, I'm not impressed. You want to impress me? You make a statement to all of the families that you affected, including my nephew, Kasim, who's been incarcerated three times, who apparently is trying to be like his dad, suffered a lot because his father wasn't alive. My brother first saw Tommy Mickens on Rockway Boulevard at age 19 with a Maserati with butterfly doors. He just knew he was going to be this big drug dealer. Instead of idolizing like a doctor or a politician, you idolize <sighs> Tommy Nickens. Mark Perry King. Shout out to my law. Who apparently was idolizing Tony Montana, a movie character. Come on, like we have to idolize people that are doing something, not a movie character. That's not even a real person. Like, come on, are you kidding me? Like Chris Gotti and Earl Gotti. Like, why you idolize people that's not even your culture? And just, they're not doing anything in the community. I don't watch Frederick Douglass or WB The Boys. Jeez, what's wrong with you brothers? Back to the end of my story. So now, Rini, who was a girlfriend of Glenn Miller, who ran the basketball tournaments in Ajax Park. This was like 1986, 87. Decided her... And Renee Matthews, I get the name. We're gonna come to my house because allegedly I had heard that Renee Matthews was using crack up in Ajax. Roughneck, she was hanging up with the Ajax. And when I moved to this side of town in '82, I had already known that the young woman carried guns. Not like American 118 for hours from. I mean, you might have had a few, but it wasn't a norm. You know, we were more BAPs. You know black American princesses. My dads just gave us money. We went shopping every week and you know, we had boyfriends and our boyfriends would leave us sometimes. So when we came to go to Brooklyn and once they go to Brooklyn, 
No, you ain't seen your boyfriend until Monday. Because them Brooklyn girls was putting it down. We were teenagers. We was, like, not putting it down like that. So... Renee Matthews and Rini and seven other girls came in Glenn Miller's car. Again, he used to give the basketball tournaments. His mom used to own a restaurant. I used to go there for breakfast on Sutphin near Hillside. And they decided they were going to jump me. So when they came to the door, they knocked on the door and it was summertime. So I go to the door. The door was open. It was a steel chair on my front step. So Wait, and my brother said, my brother shot him out and said, don't go outside, they're going to jump you because they all got out the car. And so, Rini, who was like 10 years older than us, at the time I must have been 22. My son, Michael Isaiah, was like two. She came to the door and said, I heard you said I smoke crack. I don't smoke crack. I sniff coke. You got a hit or you got a line, something like that. And I was like, what? I just looked at her like so I stood outside on my step with these nine girls in front of my house who allegedly were gonna try and jump me. My so called friend, Renee, who went to high school with me, lied and told them that I said they all smoke crack. I called her. And we weren't even friends anymore. Because you know why? I'm gonna tell you why. Let's keep it real. We used to hang out in high school, this was a few years after high school, I used to hang out at her house and all of that. I ain't know the girl was going to try and push up on me. I knew she liked girls, but I wasn't with all that. Like, I had a boyfriend, fiance. And I said, what? what? She propositioned me, and I just left her house, and the friendship was over. I was like, I, I'm not going into that lifestyle. Like, you do what you do, but don't bring me into it. So the friendship was had been over. But when I heard, I was concerned that she was hanging out in Ajax Park smoking crack. And this was during the height of the crack epidemic, like 86, 87. Back in 1986, 1987. So I called her on the payphone. It used to be on the corner of 145th and Rockaway where the daycare center is, AKA daycare. Now I remember speaking to her. A few days later, these girls come and she lied to them and told them, I said they all smoke crack. So now they decide they're gonna beat me up because I'm the new girl in my hand. I'm from the other side of town. I'm from West Side America. That's what you youngins call it. So nothing happened. My brother came to the door and they were all scared because they thought he was at left town because Doc, Doc's crew was looking for him. He did leave some time after. His girlfriend sent money for him or something and he went to Virginia and started a family and started a life there. Um, my second eldest sister's boyfriend was there. He came out and said, get the F out of here. P H U C K out of here. So they left. Then my brother shot came on off. Never forget it. Went and got a 007 knife that they used to sell on 165th Street and Jamaica Avenue with the push button. And he gave it to me. He said, Carry this with you because they're going to try you. And if they do, I can't remember exactly what he said, but basically he was saying, Gut them like a fish. Like, you make it back home. So I remember putting this 007 knife in my pants pocket. I had cut off Lee shorts. And walking up to Rockway Boulevard to go to the store, like to get groceries and different things for my son. And I remember my brother leaving, and Doc's crew had some contract on his head. And me carrying my son Michael Isaiah, the famous photographer, M I C H A E L I S I A H. I'm his momager. On my hip, over to Advanced Baptist Church and tell them, you're not going to kill my brother. And they kind of looked at me like, you know, I was out of my mind. That was about 1987. Unfortunately, my brother was murdered in 1991. Uh, I'm still here. I'm about to launch his uh, social media for his children, Kasim, Tamiko, Marquita. Because he's always with me. He taught me not to be afraid. He taught me to be happy, have fun, and stand up for myself. My brother shot him out law. He was like a father to me, and we were the same age. He'll always be Mark Perry King, all day, every day. Shot him out law 142 on Twitter. S H A K I M A L L A H 142 on Twitter. You know who it is?
little hood stories, little neighborhood stories, little middle class children trying to be gangsters. They're not gangsters. Middle class, you're from the first black middle class in New York City. Southside Jamaica, Queens. It's your girl, the queen, MC Juicy E, J U I C C Y E. It's on Twitter. MC Juicy E is on Twitter. It's a legendary pioneer, Queen MC Eve Marie King. Go on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. E V A M A R I E K I N G. Signing off. I've been clocked at four hours in terms of lecturing, but I won't do that today. But what I will do is show you my credentials from the College of New Rochelle. Graduate school alum 2003 on my way on my way one little black girl from the South Bronx Doing my research To pass the law school admissions test to gain entrance to Harvard Law School Forty years and counting and they said it couldn't be done as an 11 year old girl. I rocked the microphone today young as yell You got bars ma you got bars, baby Yeah, that's perfect.